Hey folks, this is Vince with Dad's Gaming Addiction, and once again we're going to play X-Wing. Sort of. This video is going to be geared more toward beginners. I've already posted five videos uh, that sort of have me play both sides of the table, and I explain my thoughts as I play to give you an idea of, well, what I'm thinking and why I'm doing what I'm doing. So again, geared more toward beginners, not competitive whatsoever, just a fun little practice game uh, you know, to help beginners get a better handle on some of the gameplay mechanics. Today, I'm going to be focusing on one of my favorite mechanics, which is cloaking, and that's done via the TIE Phantom here. So, as the Imperials, I've got Whisper here, who has a pilot skill of 7, although uh, you can change that, which I'll get to in a minute. Uh, and we'll be facing off against two X-Wings. One has a pilot skill of two, which is a rookie pilot, and one has a pilot skill of four, which is the Red Squadron pilot. Now, as far as the upgrade cards and all that jazz, and by the way, we're not using the whole table here. Uh, we're only going to be using part of it. Again, this is just a practice game for beginners, so uh, keep that in the back of your mind. But I've got uh, two X-Wings over here, and as you can see, uh, they have no upgrade cards whatsoever. It's just a simple rookie pilot, and a Red Squadron pilot. They both have two shields. They have three haul, two agility, and three attack power. The rookie pilot has a pilot skill of two, and Red Squadron pilot has a pilot skill of four. Focus and target lock of their abilities. Now, I do have the TIE Phantom decked out. Now, the advanced cloaking device is probably one of the best ones that you could possibly equip to a TIE Phantom, especially one with a high pilot skill. And the reason I say that is because, well, and whenever you shoot, uh, or after you perform an attack, you may perform a free cloak action. Well, see, the shooting order is determined by pilot skill. When it comes to activating and shooting, pilot skill is very, very important. Uh, in activation, in the activation phase, uh, ships are activated from lowest to highest. So in this case, these two would move and activate first. Whereas the TIE Phantom here, during the uh, combat phase would get to shoot first. It, it goes from highest to lowest. So yeah, again, pilot skill is a very important uh, part of X-Wing. But if you're looking into getting into the basics of the game, I do have other videos out there that explain them in more detail. I assume that you already know that activation phase, it's lowest to highest, and combat phase, it's highest to lowest in, with regard to pilot skill. But anyway, getting back to the TIE Phantom, the reason why I say that the advanced cloaking device is so great with Whispers because Whisper already has a pilot skill of 7. So Whisper is pretty high up there. However, if you manage to add in something like Veteran Instincts, which increases your pilot skill another 2 points, you can make this uh, pilot skill a 9 and almost guarantee that you shoot first. And the reason why you want to do that is because by itself, its agility value is only 2, which means it only gets to roll 2 defense dice when making, uh, you know, when make, when rolling defense. So it's very important to get the shot off first, and then you can use this advanced cloaking device to cloak, and then whenever you cloak, you get two extra defense dice whenever you're cloaked. So uh, instead of having two, you'll get four. So that's one of the reasons why you want a high uh, pilot skill whenever you're running the advanced cloaking device. So you could use Veteran Instincts to boost that if you want to. There's also an adaptability card that you can get. Uh, but anyway, Fire Control System is another good one. By itself, the TIE Phantom here does not have a target lock action. However, you can still equip a card that will grant you that action you know, through special means. After you perform an attack, you may acquire a target lock on the defender. So under normal circumstances, you could not take a target lock action, but this card lets you get a target lock, which is pretty cool. We've also got the Rebel Captive as the crew card down here. Once per round, the first ship that declares you the target of an attack immediately receives one stress token. That's to help control some of the stuff on the board. We know, like, when I was setting this game up, I knew that the TIE Phantom was going to be by itself. So I knew that it was always going to be a target of an attack, so I chose the Rebel Captive. So one of those X-Wings is always going to get a stress token uh, whenever they fire at it. Uh, the Lone Wolf is the elite skill that I chose. Again, you could use Veteran Instincts to up your pilot skill. But again, I knew that the X-Wings I was fighting were 2 and 4. And the reason I chose 2 and 4 was mainly to keep the squad points even. 21 plus 23 is 44. And if you add the Phantom and the upgrade cards together, that's about 43 or so. So it's about even. So I chose Lone Wolf, but again, you can do Veteran Instincts. 
there's other ones, Predator, that you could use, but uh, Lone Wolf is the one I went with. When attacking or defending, if there are no friendly ships at range 1 to 2, you may roll one of your blank results. So, let's get right down to it. Uh, we'll get down to the game. We'll put this uh, camera up on the tripod, and we'll get the game rolling. Okay, so here we are. Um, again, this is just a practice game. Normally, whenever you're setting up your ships, they'd be closer to the edge of the mat, you know, using these uh, little range templates here. But we're not going to worry about that today. This is just a practice game to show you some of this, the, the uh, cloaking mechanics that the TIE Phantom can do. So let's go ahead and plan. Now, the X-Wing player is probably thinking, hmm, we don't know where this guy is going to go. He's very maneuverable. So why don't we get one X-Wing to try and flank this way while the other one goes straight. So we're going to go ahead and do, say, one straight ahead, and the other one is going to go uh, one slight turn in this direction, just, just to sort of get into a flanking position and come around from this side. Again, that's, that's what he's thinking. This player here is going, okay, there's two X-Wings I don't know what they're going to do, but I do not want to force combat this round because I plan to cloak. Whenever you're cloaked, you cannot fire, and he wants to cloak. So uh, what he's going to do is he's going to perform, say, um, probably perform a one hard turn, which will, he doesn't know how far ahead they're going to go. He does not want to move so far ahead to where they're in combat range. Again, he's he's... He wants, to, he wants to use his cloak action. He can't do that while he's cloaked, so he's trying to stay out of their range. So he's going to go with the least amount of distance possible, so he's going to do a one hard turn. Now comes the activation phase. That's where, you know, starting from lowest to highest, the ships activate. This one goes first because it's the two. It goes one straight ahead, so the one template uh, is here and does something like this. And then for the action, uh, they're not in range for a target lock, obviously, so we'll do a focus. And then we've got this one here who's going to activate. It's a one slight turn. Uh, let's see. There we go. Getting into a flanking position. Again, focus is fine. And then we're going to activate the TIE Phantom Whisper down here. One hard turn. Uh, I, I know it's not all... Uh, technically, it's not a hard turn. It's a... I, I believe it's a... It might be. It might, no, it's not a bank. Anyway, I, I call it a hard turn. I know there is an official word, uh, term for it. Anyway, he's going to do something like this, and then he's going to go ahead and cloak. So like I said, he didn't know how far the X-Wings were going to move up. So that's why he did a, as short a maneuver as possible. And as you can see, he's still out of range. Uh, you know, so there's going to be no combat here, which is good for the TIE Phantom. Now that he's cloaked, he has a little bit more maneuverability. Now the X-Wings have some thinking to do for their next. Now the end phase, unused tokens are cleaned up, so we'll take these off. The cloaks stay with the TIE Phantom. So now the X-Wings have some thinking to do. What is this TIE Phantom? Where is it going to be whenever it decloaks? Is it going to decloak this round? Well, that's a good question. Uh, let's just say that this player wants to play cautiously. He'll go ahead and move, say... Uh, he knows that this player here more than likely has to turn this way, in this general direction. So he's probably going to want to make a turn in this direction. So he's going to go ahead and do, say, a one... From this direction, it would be like this. It'd be a, a one slight turn. So there's that. And then this player is probably going to do the opposite and, and turn back this way straight. Okay, so uh, in the end, this player will be facing this way and this player will be facing this way. And then this Type Phantom knows that that's probably what's going to happen. He can't, he, of course you don't know what the other player is going to do, but more than likely this Type Phantom knows that. So he needs to come up with something to give him an advantage. Um, how's he going to decloak? Can he, can he at least stay out of the range of one of them? That, that's going to be the question. Can he do that? Um, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the dial. So he could do, say, um, let's do... Hmm. He's going to do a three hard turn. Okay, and I just dropped the dial. Okay, sorry, bad back. It took me a minute. Okay, three hard turn. Let's say he did that. And you put that face down. Now, again, he's going to decloak before he does that. Whenever you decloak, you take that maneuver first, and then you make your maneuver. Okay, so uh, now activation. The two goes first. It's the one slight turn, which heads this way, the one bank, which puts him about here. Again, we're not going to be perfect. Uh, he's going to go ahead and take, is he in range for a target lock? 
Yes, he is. So he's going to go ahead and take a target lock action. So this one gets the red one, this one gets the blue one, A and A. This one uh, is going to activate, same deal, only in the other direction. So he's going to do something like this. So this TIE Phantom here is in trouble because he's, this one should also be in range of a target lock. As you can see. So these X-Wings are bearing down. And again, only uh, two agility by default, but has four right now because of its cloaking ability. Alright, so he's going to take a target lock as well. So right now we've got... And this is R and R. So we've got two target locks on this Phantom already, which is bad news for him. Luckily, he does have that decloak action. So the question is, how is he going to decloak? And another nice thing about the activation phase and pilot skill is that when you're a high number, you can see what the other players are going to do before you make your maneuver. And that's especially useful when you're decloaking. Now that they've moved, he knows whether or not he should decloak this way or this way or whatever the case may be. And whenever you decloak with Whisper here, you use a two template. So he knows that if he does something like this, if he decloaks here and then does his three he hard turn, he may end up running into this one. So what he may want to do is possibly go forward and then do a three hard turn that way, and then possibly a barrel roll. We'll see. So let's say he does this. He does this, uh, let's say he decloaks in this direction, like so. And now he performs his maneuver, which is a three hard turn. Okay, so now he is on the outside of this table here, which is kind of useful. Um, and now what's he going to do? Well, this isn't the ideal position for him. I mean, at least he's not going at these X-Wings head on. But as you can see here, it looks like both still have some type of bead on them. Now, if only he had a boost, he could probably boost ahead and get out of the range of this one. That would have been very useful to have. But uh, as it would have it, he's sort of stuck there. So what kind of action would he want to take? Well, he could take a barrel roll action. Again, barrel rolls only happen to the side, so if he were to use it, he'd probably go off the table, so that wouldn't be a thing. Uh, a focus is probably what he's going to want to do. Uh, and there's a reason for that, and I'll explain that later. Whisper also has a special ability, too. Um, after you perform an attack that hits, you may assign one focus token to your ship. So... He's going to Whisper here, and we also, we also have that Advanced Cloaking device, too. So Whisper is going to try to hope to get a hit, one of these X-Wings, and then use the Advanced Cloaking to cloak, get another Focus Token, so that he'll have two Focus Tokens for defense uh, whenever they both attack. But we'll see what happens. Whisper doesn't have a whole lot of attack, or a whole lot of uh, defense. He only has two shields and two hulls, so this ship is pretty fragile here. All right, now Lone Wolf will also kick in, so will Rebel Captive. But first, during the combat phase, Whisper gets to shoot first. We're at range two. So Whisper's going to shoot with four attack dice, and X-Wings only get two defense dice. So let's go ahead and do that first. All right, he's got three focus and one hit. Now, with Lone Wolf, you've got, um, you can reroll blank, so that's not going to work. Fire control system. Okay, but we're going to go ahead and spend the focus token and roll these and, and change these into hits. That because that's going to be a super huge hit. We need to make sure that we hit so that we can get we can make use of uh, Whisper's ability, which is to get the focus token back after making a hit. Now the X wing only gets two defense dice, so we're going to roll those. Okay, and a blank and an evade. So that's three hits on the X wing. The X wing that's uh, number four takes two shields. That's gone and takes a face-down damage card. So already, the X-Wing is close to death. Two more hits, and it's gone completely. All right, now because it hit, uh, Whisper gets a free focus token as the result of its ability. Again, after, a, after you perform an attack that hits, you may assign one focus token to your ship. There's that. You've also got Advanced Cloaking Device, uh, so he's going to go ahead and play that cloak action. And that's why I said it's important to have a high pilot skill whenever you're uh, you know, going to use the Advanced Cloaking Device. Okay, and we also get Fire Control System, which gives us a free target lock on the ship that we just hit. Again, Fire Control System, after you perform an attack, that you, that, after you perform an attack, you may acquire a target lock on the Defender. So we're going to go ahead and perform a target lock on that same X-Wing. So as long as this TIE Phantom here can survive this round, we'll be in good shape. So the X-Wing here is going to shoot first. This is the number four. Again, we're at range two. So the X-Wing gets three attack dice. I'm going to unroll that. Blank, blank, and critical. 
Now he does have a target lock. He's going to go ahead and spend the target lock. That was, um, how do you go with it? R and R. Those go away. He's going to reroll these blanks and hope for something better. Hit and a critical. Okay, so we've got a hit and a critical there. Um, now we get to roll four defense dice as the phantom again because he's cloaked. Two agility plus two more from the cloak equals four. So we're going to go ahead and uh, roll those. Now because Rebel Captive, again, TIE Phantom Rebel, uh, this ship has the Rebel Captive. Once per round, the first ship that declares you the target of an attack immediately receives one stress token. So that's actually good because he knows that more than likely this ship may end up trying to K turning, which is like, you know, turn, going forward and then turning around, stressing himself out, so that when this ship moves forward, or whatever the case may be, he'll be in a nice firing position. But now we can't do that. You cannot perform red maneuvers while you're stressed out. So that Rebel Captive came in handy there. So four defense dice here for the Phantom. All right, so two focus, two blank. That's actually really bad. However, with Lone Wolf, uh, when you're attacking or defending, uh, you may reroll one of your blank results. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Evade. Okay, that's good. So he, can, he has a choice here. He could spend the focus uh, and do three evade and, and take these out, or he could uh, take the hit and lose one shield. So what would he want to do? Well, he knows that this ship over here is at range, probably range three. So he's going to go ahead and spend his focus token and uh, turn these into evades, and now he's got three evades, so no damage was done, despite the fact that they were at close range. This X-Wing is close to death, this one is still full strength, this one's now going to attack. He has a target lock still, unfortunately. Yeah, we're at range three. Now, when you're at range three, you get an extra defense die, which is nice when you're using a primary weapon. So, uh, when the attacker is using a primary weapon, the defender gets an extra defense die. Three attack dice, hit, hit, focus, he's going to spend that target lock, a and A to re-roll that focus. Focus. Okay, so two fo two hits and a focus. We got five defense dice. I have to grab one more from the box. Right, there we go. So five defense dice here. Two with the agility, uh, and then two with the cloak, one for being at range three. So that's a total of five. So we better get something good here. But again, this is dice, so you know anything can happen. Yeah, see, like I said, two evade. One focus and two blanks. With Lone Wolf, we can re-roll a blank if we really wanted to. We don't have to. Focus. So, uh, two evade, two hits, no damage. So that's why I said, had this cloak, had this pilot skill been like one or something and shot last, this cloak would have not have been there and these X-Wings would have murdered that TIE Phantom. But because this one got the shot off first, that advanced cloaking kicked in, the extra two agility mattered. Okay. So, and that's, and, and sort of moving off to the side like we did, kept this one at range three. It didn't get him out of the firing arc, which is what we wanted, but at least it kept it at range three. Whereas moving forward would more than likely both would have been around range two. All right, so anyway, uh, that was the end of that combat phase, clean up unused tokens. The X-Wings uh, have some thinking to do. Uh, so where is the TIE Phantom gonna go? What are they gonna do? This one has to do some sort of green maneuver to clear that token if he wants to take actions. So maybe he'll go ahead and do so he can't do any sort of turn, at least not. Uh, let's just, uh, let's, let's say, now one thing that I will say about low pilot skilled pilots, they move first. They have the ability to block, which means that they can move themselves into a position to where they hope that the other player runs into them. So he's going to go ahead and do a one slight turn in the hopes that this TIE Phantom is stupid enough to do a one hard turn or a two hard turn and try and face them head on. But secretly we know that the TIE Phantom is smarter than that. Okay, so that's what this X-Wing is going to do. This X-Wing over here is going to play it nice and safe. Um, he knows that the TIE Phantom is probably going to move forward. So we're going to go ahead and do a um, one slight turn as well to move it in this direction. Now the TIE Phantom has that cloak. So we're going to decloak first and then move. So we need to figure out, okay, so are we going to decloak forward? Are we going to decloak to the side? What are we going to do? You know, so we need to figure this out. So why don't we... Hmm. This is where the hard part comes in. Because we don't know... We don't know what the X-Wings are going to do. And judging... All right, so if we did... Again, trying to stay out of their firing arc. I don't think we'll be able to be able to stay because this one we know is probably going to move this way. We don't know what this one's going to do because this, this could do anything. 
But we, what we want to do with this is try and move it. This, this is where the strategy comes into play with the cloaking. We, we're actually planning two moves, not just one. We're planning whether or not we're going to move forward or to the side, and then what to do with the dial once we're there. That's, where, that, that's what I like about the cloaking. It gives us so many advantages. And we've got a barrel roll action on top of that. So we can move a lot of different ways, but we're trying to guess what they're going to do. And that's the tough part. So um, why don't we do something like something like this? We'll do a one hard turn. And the reason, well, yeah, let's do that. We'll do a one hard turn. And there's a reason why we're doing that. Okay. So let's go ahead and activate in order. So we're going to have uh, this two activate first. It's a one slight turn. And now they shouldn't bump, but because this one is going to be moving down like that, yeah. I eyeballed it. I knew they wouldn't bump, but there was there's that danger there. Now this this one here is probably going to take a target lock, so we're going to go ahead and do A and A. Target lock, target lock. Four moves next, doing a one slight turn as well, which is a green maneuver. And because it's a green maneuver, that removes the stress. So that does that. Now we're, it seems like they're bearing down on this guy, right? Well, that that's that's. It looks like it, but the Thai Phantom has a trick up his sleeve. Okay, and he's going to take a tie, uh, or he's going to take a uh, target lock as well. So we've got target locks all over the place. Now the Thai Phantom's like, nah, not going to happen. One hard turn. We're going to decloak first, though. So we're going to do a two. We're going to decloak in this direction, right? And well, where are we going to decloak in this direction? Yeah, we're going to decloak in this direction. Do that. Now, the one hard turn, I meant to adjust it to the, I was trying to go this way with it. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now we're going to do a one hard turn in this direction to get him out of dodge. So, with the one hard turn maneuver, there we go. Now, these X-Wings have no firing solution whatsoever on this guy. So that's actually really good. And for his action... He'll go ahead and take, um, he can go ahead and take the cloak action. All right. Now, was that the best move? Maybe, maybe not. But he knew that the X-Wings were going to bear down on him from this direction. He was trying to get his, he was trying to get himself out of there as best as possible. So he went ahead and did that. All right. So next one up, um, let's go ahead and do the X-Wings again. We're going to go back to the maneuver phase and plan out their maneuvers. The X-Wings now are not as maneuverable as this guy. So they're going to want to do maybe a, this one's going to do like a two hard turn to try and turn himself around. This one's going to do much the same thing. Or he could do a K-turn. He can do that. Although this is a pilot skill of two. He may not make the K-turn. If he does a K-turn, a four K-turn, he should be able to clear that X-Wing. Just if I eyeball that, he should be able to clear that. Um, and then the Phantom here has to do some thinking, okay, what am I going to do? This one may can't K-turn, and more than likely will K-turn off the table. This one may K-turn. So what would we do? Well, let's go ahead and how about we move down this way, if possible. So maybe if we do something like that. But we need to be careful not to be in range of this guy when that happens. Or better yet... Let's keep going around this way if we can. Because this one is going to be stressed if he does K-turn. Hmm. All right. Let's go with a... Now, can we should be able to K-turn ourselves. Or, yeah, we have a 3 K-turn. The downside to that is uh, he won't be able to... Well, he won't be able to take an action after the fact, but he can still decloak when he's stressed. So he might, he might K-turn himself. That might be the best move for him. Okay, let's go, let's go with that. Okay, so now we've got uh, the two going first, which is up here. So that's a 4K turn. So that's going to end up looking something like this. He turns around like that and receives a stress token. Okay. And um, this one here activates next going. It's a two hard turn. It's a white maneuver. He can still take an action. Okay, now I had, let's see, N and N was on this, R and R was here. No, 
R was here, A was here. Okay. A lot of target locks floating around. He's going to take a focus. And because he can't take the target lock, he's already got one. And this one is going to activate 3K turn. And that is uh, actually pretty good because now he might actually get a shot off on this one here and finish him off. We'll see. Just because you're stressed doesn't mean you can't take action. So the cloak stays with him. Although the downside is he's cloaked. So maybe he should have decloaked first and then K turn because now he can't shoot with that cloak on. But he already made the move, so it's kind of late for that. So he's going to get a stress token as a result of that. Okay, but uh, that actually might have been good, you know, if he had, de had, had he decloaked and then K-turned, he might have been able to shoot at this. But the only way to do that would be to, to decloak this way and then K-turn, or to decloak this way and then K-turn, in which case he might be in range of, you know, this one here or this one here. This X-Wing might actually be in combat range, and he is not. Okay, they are barely out of range. So no one is fighting this turn. This is sort of like a recovery one, recovery phase. Okay, next phase, clean up on used tokens. This TIE Phantom is still going strong, no, no damage whatsoever. Or this TIE Phantom sort of playing mind games with these other guys over here. The X-Wings want to try and get in position, so we're going to go ahead and do a one slight turn with this guy to get him facing this way. This one's going to inch forward ever so cautiously with a one straight maneuver, like so, to clear this stress token, because that's a green maneuver. This guy knows that these guys are coming at him from this side, so he needs to get out of there if he can. So maybe he might do something like this. He might choose to do a too hard turn, something like that, or maybe a too slight turn, which would clear the stress. All right, let's do that. Okay, so what we're going to do first, the two moves first, one straight ahead, moving that forward. And that clears the stress token there. Because this, the X-Wing pilot doesn't know if he's going to decloak this way or this way. So the X-Wings are trying to cover as much ground as possible. That does clear the stress token. And he will take a focus action, because he already has the target lock. So we don't need that. All right, this one here is going to do a one slight turn as well, which puts him about here, like so. All right, and he will also take a focus. Now, here again with the, uh, with the TIE Phantom, the advantage of having the higher pilot skill. Now we know where the X-Wings are. Do we want to decloak this way, or do we want to decloak this way? Do we want to decloak forward? What would be, what would be the best shot here? Um, I'm eyeballing this. If I decloak this way, that would actually work. And then the two slight turn might actually move it. The, the downside to decloaking to this way and then, because he knows he's got a two slight turn here. The question is, if he goes too slight, if he does the decloak and moves two down somewhere around here and does the two this way, he's going to be in range, range one of this guy, which is bad. And this one's also going to have a beat on him. So he's going to go ahead and uh, decloak straight ahead, I think would be the way to go here. All right, and now we'll perform the maneuver, which is a two-slight turn. Now, that may end up hitting this X-Wing. We don't know. And does it. Okay, it does. So they end up wrecking, so he doesn't get to take an action, unfortunately. So he decloaked, but the, but the nice thing about this is he, the X-Wings can't touch him. They, they, they have no combat. This is, there's no combat here this round. This Phantom cleared the stress using that two-slight turn. So that's awesome. So this, these X-Wings, again, have to try and figure out how to get a bead on this TIE Phantom before they get destroyed. So I apologize, this might be a long match, but I'm showing you the advantages here of a TIE Phantom and its cloaking abilities. These, he, this thing is all over the place, and these X-Wings cannot seem to bear down on them. So this X-Wing here may want to try and K-turn, if possible, to try and, and get a bead. Yeah, he's going to go ahead and K-turn to turn himself around. And this one here might try doing the same thing. Um, let's see. Where's his dial? There it is. And yet I dropped it on the floor. Okay. Yeah, sorry folks. I have a, I have a bad back and these dials are, ugh. There we go. 
All right, so he might try a K-turn himself, for, so four K-turn. That's going to stress out both of them. They both have target locks, though, so that's something that the TIE Phantom knows and has to sort of watch out for. Now, he knows that he's not going to be able to avoid these guys forever. Okay, so he's going to go ahead and do something like a one hard turn to try and get some damage done on these ships. This one is damaged, so this would be the ideal target. However, this one here is an easy, I mean, this, this one is an easy target, especially since he knows that he's probably going to be going this way or 4K turning. So we might have a head-on engagement here. Or better yet, what if we did... What if we did something like this? What if we did a 2K turn, or 2 hard turn, rather? All right, let's do a 2 hard turn. And there's a reason why we're doing that. Well, would that work? If we did a, if we did a 1 hard turn... All right, I'm thinking. What do I want to do? What do I want to do? All right, let's just go with the 1 hard turn. Be done with it. Okay, so the X-Wings get to move first. 4K turn. They're both going to use the 4K turn maneuver to try and get a bead on this guy. And again, that's a stressful maneuver, but the target locks go with them. And that's a stress token there, so no action. This one also does the 4K turn. Stressed out there, no action. Target locks follow. And now the TIE Phantom is going to do... First, he's he doesn't have the cloak action, but he's going to do that one hard turn in the hopes of getting himself in some sort of firing solution, which he does. That's why it's, I was debating on the two, but I knew with the one at least he'd get something in there. Okay, so now he gets to take an action. Does he want to barrel roll? If he barrel rolls, it's not going to help him at all. Whether he barrel rolls this way or this way, he's still going to be in this X-Wing's firing arc. This one here, though, I'm eyeballing it. He's probably at range three, but again, we're going to be cloaked at that point in time because, again, we get first shot and we have an advanced cloaking device. So he's going to take the focus to ensure that he gets a hit on this X-Wing. Okay, so let's go ahead and go on to combat. We're uh, still going to start with the TIE Phantom here at range two. We get four attack dice. And the target lock, unfortunately, is on this guy down here, but, you know, we've got to focus. All right, we've got three hits. Uh, we have Lone Wolf, so we're going to go ahead and use Lone Wolf to reroll the blank at range one of the two. That's a focus. Does he want to spend that focus? Uh, that's tough. That's an extra hit, yes. However... He may need that focus for... He doesn't know if this X-Wing is going to be in range or not. If he is, he might need both focus tokens. Because you can have more than one focus token. You just can't... You can't take that action, the same action, twice. Like, you can't take a focus action and then another focus action, like with Darth Vader. But if you are assigned to another focus token on top of an additional one, that's okay. So he's debating. Do I want the extra hit? Or do I just want to play it safe, keep the focus token, and use it for defense in case both can attack me? Um, he's he's going to play it safe and just use the three here. All right, so now this X-Wing gets to roll two defense dice. All right, blank and an evade. So that's two hits against this three versus one is two. So both this X-Wing number two, the shields are gone, completely gone. And now this one gets a focus token for hitting. And we're out of focus tokens. I have to get from the box. So now we've got two focus tokens, and we get the cloak, advanced cloaking device. So where did I put my cloak? There we go. So now he's got some defense dice there, extra defense dice. Now the number four down here gets to shoot back, assuming he's in range. He is not in range. Okay, so that's actually good for him. So he could have used the focus token here, still had one remaining after the fact to defend against this. Now this is at range two. Now because of that, Rebel Captive. Once per round, the first ship that declares you the target of an attack receives one stress token. So, <laughs> this ship is now the proud owner of two stress tokens. So he's going to be stressed out for a while. He does have that target lock still. So we've got that going for him. Again, this is a dice game, so anything goes. Three. Wow, two crits and a hit. You don't, you don't get much better than that. Okay, so this TIE Phantom is in trouble. We've got four defense dice here. Now, he does have Lone Wolf, which is good. Oh, I forgot about the target lock um, with the fire control system. But I think he's going to leave the fire control system on this one down here because he wants to finish this one off. 
or he wants to leave the target lock on this one because he wants to finish this one off. But he's going to roll four defense dice here and hope to get some evades. All right, two evades, one focus. So he's going to spend a focus token. And now he's got three evades. So two crits and a hit, three evades, no damage. So that is awesome for the TIE Phantom. This one does not get to shoot out of range. So again, the TIE Phantom is unscathed. So clean up unused tokens. And let's go back to planning again. Now this X-Wing has two stresses on him. So he's like, okay, i got to clear some of these off. So this one might want to do, say, uh, maybe one straight. Because he does not know where this guy is going to go yet. Uh, this one here wants to get back in. The, he's got a stress token on him too. He's going to slowly get himself back into the fray as well. So he might do, say, a... He'll do a one slight turn, which is a green maneuver. Okay, and now again we've got a cloak now. So what are we going to do with that? Uh, we got to figure out. Okay, once we decloak, where are we going to go? Um, let's think about this. Let's go ahead and do. Can we do a three? Yeah, we can do a three hard turn. All right, let's do that. We're going to go and do a three hard turn with that character, and I'll explain why in a minute. Two goes first, which is down. Oh, here he is. Okay, so we're going to go one straight ahead. That clears off one of his stress tokens, not both. So he cannot take an action. There he goes. That's one stress token gone. He still has the target lock, though. All right. Next up is this guy down here. He gets to go one slight turn like so. That clears off his stress. He'll take a focus. And now the TIE Phantom gets to go again. He has a choice to make. Do I decloak this way? Do I go forward? Do I decloak this way? What am I going to do? Well, he knows that this X-Wing is getting a bead on him. So what he's going to do, he's going to go this way. He's going to decloak in this direction. He's going to go away. That way he tries to maintain that beyond range 3 distance if he can, so that this one cannot attack him. So he's going to go and decloak in this direction. So he's going to do something like this. Put himself back here. Now, keep in mind, he's still in range of this one, which is, but that's what this three hard turn's going to do for him. He's got a three hard turn, which puts him right here. I mean, that is amazing. If you take a look at this, here is the X-Wing's firing arc. That TIE Phantom is at range one, and that X-Wing cannot do anything about it. Now, this one may still have a firing solution, but it's at range three. So this one is in a good, good position because this one's going to fire. It's going to hit more than likely, and he'll be able to cloak. At range three with the cloak, this one is not going to do a, lot, a whole lot of damage. Now, he could have done maybe a two hard turn and avoided an attack altogether, but being at range one like this is something that you just can't pass up. All right, so anyway, let's get to the attack phase starting with, or the combat phase starting with him. That's five attack dice for the TIE Phantom. So that's just awesome. Number two here is going to get blown up more than likely. Oh, for his action, he's going to take a focus. He wants that for uh, offensive purposes. He could barrel roll, I suppose, but he's to try and get out of this firing solution, but he's not going to do that. All right, so we're going to go ahead and roll these. Now we've got two hits, a crit, a focus, and a blank. Lone Wolf, he's going to re-roll that to focus. He's going to spend his focus token, and that is a total of four hits and a crit. That is amazing. So we spent that. Now, the def this X-Wing is dead. Uh, if you roll two defense, it's still three hits. So one of eight. So you take a face-up damage card and uh, three other hits. And that's, that's just more than this rookie pilot had. And he only had three hull left. So this X-Wing gets, you know, he's, he's blown out of the water. He's dead. So that was a face-up and then two face-down like so. Or actually, yeah, there's five hits. That would be four. Four hits. Yeah, so he's, he's dead. Just put it that way. And that critical, by the way, was a major hull breach. Starting there on after you receive this card's all damage cards dealt to you are dealt face up. So he's, he's really dead. Anyway, so that, that's, that's it for that. Bye-bye, rookie pilot. Okay, so uh, that clears uh, this, this target lock here. Because that's the target lock that that pilot had on him. So we're going to take that out of here. Now it's just a face-off between these two. Now this one gets to shoot back. So we're at range three. Now this one also, by the way, before we get started, uh, hits the focus and the cloak. Again, the cloak came from the advanced cloaking device for hitting. The focus came from Whisper's ability. And uh, fire control systems didn't kick in 
Well, it did kick in, but he's dead, so we don't need it. We've already got a target lock on who we want anyways. That's not going to matter. Now, the Rebel Captive will kick in here, since we're attacking him at range 3. This is He's going to get a uh, stress token. But he does get to roll three attack dice against Whisper, and, and again, this is a dice game, so bad things could happen. All right, two hits and a focus. He's going to go ahead and spend his focus token, make this three hits. Okay, now at range three, again, we get five defense dice here. Two for uh, the agility, two for the cloak, and one for being at range three. So it's three plus the focus token that we have, so we should be in good shape. We are. We're going to spend the focus token. That's three evade there, two blanks. Now, again, we have lone wolf, so we can also roll this. That's, that's a focus. That would have turned into an evade as well after spending the focus. That's four evade that he got out of that. So four evade versus three hits, no damage whatsoever. And we'll move on to the next round. Again, he's cloaked. This X-Wing has no idea what the hell to do because, <laughs> look, he's, got a, he's stressed out. He's just going to move forward. And, and he doesn't know what the TIE Phantom's going to do. He doesn't know if he's going to go this way, this way. You know, or, you know, which way he's going to go. Now, the TIE Phantom, that's where the, clo the advanced cloaking device really, really helps. Because after the X-Wing moves, the TIE Phantom could, could go either way with this. So, I think what he's going to do is he's going to do a too hard turn. And there's a reason for that as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and resolve this and see what happens. The X-Wing moves forward by one. Clears the stress, takes the focus action. The TIE Phantom is going to decloak. He's going to decloak in this direction. Uh, something like that, yeah. And then uh, the two hard turn will bring him here. Now, the nice thing about Tie Phantoms. I mean, he looks like he's in a bad position there, but he has a barrel roll. That's, that's, that's what I was going for here. He's got a barrel roll action. He's going to take a barrel roll, and when you perform a barrel roll, which is, you know, you can use, um, you could use, you can basically go from like, you can start it from here, or you can start it from here, or wherever you want. So he's going to go, he's going to do something like this. He's going to, there. Now, I don't, you guys probably can't see this. I mean, you might be able to. Let's go ahead and focus in and zoom in on this a little bit. So, the firing solution here is kind of touchy. The X-Wing does appear to have a firing solution on the TIE Phantom, but the TIE Phantom gets to go first. Now, uh, so that, that's going to be very helpful. So, the TIE Phantom's going to go first. He has five attack dice. He's hoping just to blow this X-Wing up before the X-Wing can even shoot back. Now, by the way, this goes with it. He does have a target lock. Keep that in mind. All right, so we've got that. Uh, he's going to go ahead and spend his target lock to re-roll, uh, let's see, N and N. So he's going to roll these to the focus and the blank. Something good, something good. Crit. Oh, wow. Four hits and a crit. Now, the X-Wing at this point is dead because he can't use two defense dice, two blanks. That's, wow, a crit. And one, two, three, four. Yeah, he's dead. So there you go, folks. That is the power of the TIE Phantom. The TIE Phantom just blew this, blew both X-Wings out of the water, did not take one point of damage. Yes, I bet you that, you know, had I actually been playing against an, uh, a, a, a decent player, I'm trying to take the camera off the tripod here. Had I been playing against a decent player, the X-Wings probably would have maneuvered a little bit better than what they did. Uh, but hopefully this gives you some indication as to the destructive power of the TIE Phantom. The TIE Phantom, with all these upgrade cards, you know, they it just it walloped on these uh, red shirt X-Wings, if you will. So there you go. Uh, another quick beginner game for you, X-Wing. Hopefully you enjoyed this. If you guys want to see more, uh, you know, mock games, let me know. If you guys haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And check out my official website, www.dadsgamingaddiction.com. This is Vince. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.